everyone and welcome to Carry Hope Ministries. I'm Crystal and this is Mark <laughs> and we are so glad you guys are joining us. If you are indeed watching the live stream part of this, if at the end would you just say hello to us so we can say hello back. Very good. That's it. It means a lot to us when you do that and we're glad to be with you tonight on this Thursday. Uh, you know, but it may not be Thursday when you watch it, but no, we're glad no, to be here on Thursday. We're, we're just glad you're here with us. Absolutely. That? <laughs> That's great. Listen, uh, we've got a great week coming up at the church. A great weekend is what we're praying for and hoping for and asking for God to bless. We'll be talking more about that later on in the program. Just simple uh, to say that we are expecting to do something, a throwback sort of Sunday like we did last year. I want to thank you for helping today oh, to yeah. get the uh, old sanctuary ready and some other guys Jamie, Don, and there's even others I'm sure that have helped uh, in the background as well. There's been a lot of work done at the church. We're excited about what Sunday brings as we have Old Fashioned Day, but again, more of that coming up later on. Tonight we're talking about Acts chapter 15 and a little bit, the first 10 verses of chapter 16. It's really only about six verses of chapter 15 and then the first 10 verses of chapter yeah. 16. But if you want to just stay with us here, get your Bible because... We talked a little bit about something we want to review here in just a second, but let's go ahead and look at some of these slides, and then we'll go back and review what we said because it, it helps us going forward. But tonight we're going to talk about changing teams, and that's okay. important uh, to know that we can do that and still yeah. be effective in God's <laughs> kingdom. So we are Carry Hope Ministries, as Crystal said. We're a product of, oh my goodness, I'm going to go back. Wait a minute, I'm going too fast here. All right, I'm in a hurry to get this over, I guess. <laughs> we are a product of Gold Hill Wesleyan Church, which is located one mile off of U.S. Highway 52 on Liberty Road in Gold Hill. If you don't have a church home, we would love for you to make us your church home in reality, or you can check us out online. We have worship service every Sunday at 10 o'clock, but uh, we usually don't get around to live streaming it until 10.15 because of some copyright issues. But you can join us online. And also, we have prayer time at 6 o'clock every evening, uh, every Sunday evening, that is. We will not be having it this Sunday evening because of the fact that it is Father's Day. And then Crystal and I are back on uh, Thursdays for Carry Hope Ministry. Uh, we've said that the theme has been, what do we do now when we talk about the book of Acts? And we have gone back over that and over that because the disciples are now without Jesus being there to guide them along the way. They're trusting the Holy Spirit, and they're working things out together. Last week, though, we talked about the first church dispute. And that dispute came about because of the fact that uh, we had Jews and Gentiles together for the first time starting to worship. And when I say starting to worship, they're actually in different locations, but they were following the same theology. And so it was important for the Jews and Gentiles to get together and recognize, kind of hammer out or iron out exactly what needed to be the necessities of worship. A lot of the well, I shouldn't say a lot of them, but several Jewish people were. Are you, you're walking around. Is there an issue with something on the live stream? No, I was, Jan had said uh, she didn't have any volume. Is at my end. I was trying okay. to answer. We're good now? You got we're volume? Good. We're good? Okay. Uh, thank you, though, because around. sometimes that happens and we need to know about that. But we're talking about uh, uh, the Jews and Gentiles getting together, and a group of Jews were saying, listen, it's great for us to worship together. We'll welcome the Gentiles, but they need to do a few things that we've done particularly things like circumcision, which was one of the Old Testament laws way back when, when God first spoke to Moses, or excuse me, spoke to Abraham even before that. And of course, there was circumcision going on down through the generations. But the Gentile believers really didn't practice that. And actually, Paul became an advocate of them not having to be circumcised, but still being able to worship God because it was by grace and faith that you were saved. It had nothing to do with circumcision. So what they decided to do was, of course, the Gentiles uh, or the Gentile church sent Paul, sent Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem to talk with the apostles and the source of some of these uh, rumors and innuendos and really uh, legalistic rules that they were trying to get through uh, into the Gentile churches as well. And uh, they sent a, or they wrote a letter after they had met in Jerusalem and they sent it to the Gentile churches. And really, it was James that spoke up in the middle of a meeting in Jerusalem and said uh, he felt the Holy Spirit leading them. And Peter also, because Peter said, why would you shackle the Gentiles with a lot of rules that the Jews have had trouble following all these years as well? So they, they wrote these three things down. And it's important that we say one other thing. Uh, Abraham was being taught at that time in all the synagogues. So if Gentile believers wanted to learn about this Jesus, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, Moses, the law of Moses. Thank you, Crystal. She had to straighten me out on that. Uh, 
And now I lost my place. But he said, he said, you know, if you want to learn the law, the law of Moses, they're going to the synagogues, they're learning the law of Moses. So let's just put these very simple rules into place. And they were to abstain from food polluted by idols, to abstain from sexual immorality, and to abstain from the meat of strangled animals and from blood. Their blood and, all, you know, obviously human blood, that wouldn't be a part of it, but uh, animal blood. So these three things, in addition to learning the law of Moses, were all that was going to be required for the Gentiles. Now, as we ended last week, we and, and that was found in uh, Acts 15, verse 20. But as we ended last week, we talked about how these rules seem good to the apostles. Paul and Barnabas were going to take these rules along with two guys named Judas and Silas from Jerusalem to represent the uh, Jewish believers. And all of them were going to go back to their churches and uh, they were going to explain that, hey, this is what's looked upon by all the believers, whether Jew and Gentile, as the necessities, as long as you're continuing to learn Moses' law. So let's look and continue from where we talked about last week, just a few verses here to close out chapter 15. So sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Because this, you know, this letter has, has come to the forefront. It's been taking care of the Gentiles and Jews on the same page. But it says, now let's see how they're doing. Barnabas wanted to take John also called Mark. So if you've ever read the Gospel of Mark, this is who we're talking about. John also called Mark with him. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia. We talked about this a few weeks ago. We'll review it in a second. And had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus but Paul chose Silas and left. Silas was one of the guys that came from Jerusalem with this letter. So Paul took him and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Now, we've looked at this map several times, and this is Cilicia right here. This is Syria. This is Cyprus. Antioch is where most of this time, uh, they got the letter from Jerusalem they went up to Antioch, or actually the Bible will talk about how they came down to Antioch. I don't know why that, they phrase it that way, but nevertheless they do. So a lot of this discussion has taken place in Antioch. They came with the letter, Silas, Judas, Paul, Barnabas to Antioch. Well, Silas and Paul decide to go through Cilicia and Syria, this region up here, when uh, his old partner Barnabas takes John Mark and he goes to Cyprus. So they're going back to the old churches and trying to, I guess, lift them up and encourage them. Now, uh, I'm going to invite Crystal to come back in here with me for just a second, and we're going to talk about this disagreement. It was John, Mark, and uh, you know, they were divided about this, so much so that they couldn't work together anymore. I think about that. I think about things like the Beatles. You know, they, we, can't, we can't work <laughs> together anymore. But it's effective in the way that they're still going to be used to spread the gospel. And I think that's something we really need to be aware of. There are going to be people that are going to come and go in our lives, in our ministerial lives, in our churches, but we need to always show grace and encourage, because it says that the church encouraged them, even though they were split apart now, to continue to preach the gospel. I mean, have you ever known a time when people, you know, just they went their separate ways? I, I think about, you know, how sad you can be when someone raised, is raised up in your church and then they decide they want to go in the ministry or in the mission field and we have to say goodbye to them. Right. But, you know, what does that recall to you? I mean, when you when you see that and you hear that, I mean, it makes you think about, I guess where, where I'm leading with this is, what's the mission? What's the mission? Yeah, I mean, I mean what is the well, mission? Uh, the mission is to spread the gospel exactly. to the whole world. And in doing this, um, the first thing I always think about is how sometimes Satan means things for evil, but God can turn them into something good. Satan caused a division there. However, because Barnabas went his way and took John Mark with him, and Paul went his way, at they were able to cover more ground and spread the gospel to more regions. Right. They go back to these churches. They're able to encourage them and, yes, continue yeah. to preach to new believers. Yeah. But you're right. It, there's, it seems to be that Satan meant it for evil 
and God meant it for good. We can go all the way back to the book of Genesis and talk about the book, uh, I mean, the story of Joseph, Joseph and how his brothers sent him to Egypt trying to, yeah. get, well, they didn't, they didn't really send him to Egypt, but he ends up in Egypt. Yeah. And they meant it for his harm, but God used it to save the nation of Israel. And God meant it for good. So we do, we have this situation. And also we want to point out, you know, the hostility you, there has to be forgiveness after this, and yeah. much later, I, I don't have it written down with me right now, no. but Paul is going to refer to Mark. Yes, He's he going does. to talk about Mark in good terms and how he wants to see Mark, or Mark is with him in prison or something to that effect, but there is a reference much later on in the New Testament about John Mark being with Paul, so this is not forever, and sometimes people go out of their life. The thing that we want to remember, though, is even if things are great, like, you know, I, I like to keep you here. I want to hold on to people I know and I love them. But, you know, I, I mean, and obviously I'm not talking about it in the terms of marriage. <laughs> but what I'm saying is you can't, you don't just want to sit on your laurels. You want to keep going forward, you know. And so when people come to the church and it's exciting and the church is growing or your Sunday school class or any sort of ministry is growing, we need to start thinking about how can we bring more people to Jesus. That's the ultimate goal, not how many people can we get in here at the same time. It's so we can continue to educate, be educated, and go forward sharing the gospel. It is. So, so let's go on. Okay. Uh, I want you to pay attention also to Derby and Lystra right here in Pamphylia because we're going to be talking about that as we begin chapter 16 and Paul's continued adventure. Paul came to Derby and then Lystra, what I said just before where a disciple named Timothy lived. Now, this is obviously not one of the original disciples, but that's the way you hear them referred to in the New Testament from here on out. They're all called disciples, uh, anyone who's a believer in Jesus. So that's where Timothy lived. It says, whose mother was a Jewish believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him, meaning Timothy. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews, who live in that area. Very interesting. There's some legalism here Paul's bowing to in order to stay at peace with those who are living in the vicinity. So he goes ahead, so they'll continue to speak fondly of Timothy and elevate his ministry, and he circumcises him. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. Therefore, it wasn't required by the Greek law, the Gentile law, that he be circumcised, but Paul did it anyway. I think about what Paul said about how he became all things to all people so that some might be saved. He's kind of teaching Timothy the same lesson here. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles, again, back in that letter, and the elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Paul, in other words, and Silas, and then also you've got uh, Barnabas and John Mark going to these churches, telling them what Jerusalem had said, just clearing up any theological issues, making sure they're all on the same page. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept, and I think this is a fascinating passage here, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. We'll get back to that in just a second. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia. I'm glad all these are so easy to say. But the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to again. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we, strange pronoun change here, got ready at once to leave for Macedonia concluding that God had called us, again, first-person pronoun, to preach the gospel to them. So I've got a little map here. I hope you can see it some. Uh, we've got Cilicia. We saw it on the last slide as well. But here's Pamphylia. Here's Phrygia, Bithynia. Here's Mysia. It said Paul came through Mysia and, wanted, and ended up going to Macedonia. But he wanted to go to Asia. He was kept from it by the Holy Spirit. So again, I'm going to ask Crystal in here for just a second. And let's talk about this. Paul wanted to go into Asia, but instead he ends up going west to Macedonia. And when you think about that, I'm just amazed because, see, today we tend to think that wherever we can take the gospel, we should take the gospel. Are there still times when we're not supposed to take the gospel to certain regions? I'm just amazed by that, and I wonder, and I've never even really thought about it a great deal because we're just trying to send missionaries like crazy because we think we've got to get everybody under the blood of Jesus, which is a great way to look at it. But at the same time, are there times when, for one reason or another, we're not ready to go? Yeah. 
Are there times when we're kept from going there? A lot of times we think we're kept from going there by government, but is it possible that the Holy Spirit could be stopping us? And yeah. could we uh, could we be aware of it? How could we be aware of it? What's the difference? Boy, I put you on the spot, didn't I? Well, okay. First of all, there's there was two different Bible verses that came to mind, but um, and one of them was the to everything there under there is a purpose under heaven. Yeah, three. and a time a time to speak and a time to be silent. So there can be times when yes, maybe the Holy Spirit is sending you somewhere and there's a time you shouldn't be speaking up. I thought about when you were reading that, um I was talking to a family member one time and I felt like I had gotten to a certain point speaking with them, and then I really felt like I needed to just stop. Just back off and let the Holy just Spirit. Just stop. Yeah. But I was young, and I didn't just stop, and it just... Pushed them away. De-escalated, yes. Yeah. It yeah. de-escalated from there. So I do think you can feel the Holy Spirit. Um, if you're sensitive to it. Yes. I mean, the problem is, I think sometimes we want to see people saved so badly yes. that we don't stop. And so it's important that sometimes we do just wait on the Holy Spirit to do the changing. Yes. These guys, really, their mission was to preach the gospel, but also to share with the churches already established about that letter and those rules that James and Peter and the other original apostles and even some of the new believers and Jews had come to set for the Gentiles. So they're doing that. They're building up the church. Everything that builds a church isn't just action and salvation. Sometimes yeah. it takes time. Some people get saved first time they come to church. You hear about these stories. Sometimes it takes kind of a trickle-down effect by the Holy Spirit. So we have to be in tune with him and let him do the changing yeah. because we can't change him. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, she's a big Birds fan. So, <laughs> all right. Very good. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Well, and you know what you were saying is so true because... In the U.S., we have been very fortunate to hear the gospel preached, most of us, all our lives. Um, and in some countries, though, where the gospel is not open to be preached, these people have never heard it. And when they do hear it, some of them, it don't change just like that. Right. Some of them, it may take years before they actually open their hearts sure. to, to the gospel message and, and receive Christ. Sometimes we are raised in a fundamentalist background and we're told, thing, uh, you know, no <laughs> offense and to my grandfather no, no, no. or anybody who was a preacher for many years, but you'd hear things like, this may be your last chance to do this. This may be your last night. And this would really compel people. You know, uh, Jesus could come tomorrow or you could die tomorrow. And, and, you know, this would compel people. But after you don't die and after Jesus doesn't come, sometimes that fear element is removed yeah. and there's a lackadaisical, the, yeah. the need isn't yeah. as urgent. So we need to be careful how we present the gospel. You're right, there's times when it takes a long period of time yeah. to do that. Uh, all right, listen, we've got a couple things we're going to talk about. First of all, let me tell you about uh, Old Fashioned Day. Coming up this Sunday at our church, there's Forrest and Amy over here. So somebody uh, message them, text them, uh, share it, or uh, tag them in it so they can see themselves. Uh, they were dressed up last year, and some people go way out, you know, way beyond uh, Forest Navy here for Old Fashioned Day. Uh, if you'd like to come dressed up, we'd love to have you to do that, but it promises to be a great time. Sunday school's at 9.15, and worship is at 10 o'clock, both in the same building uh, for the adults. Children are going to be in the fellowship hall during the Sunday school hour. They're going to join the adults for worship, except for nursery. We are going to have nursery available, but it's going to be old-style worship. Got to have some great testimonies. That, listen to me, though. It cannot be live streamed. We do not have Wi-Fi, so it's not going to be live streamed. If you want to come to Old Fashioned Day, you got to come. So where do you come to? Gold Hill Wesleyan, Liberty Road, Gold Hill, one mile off U.S. Highway 52. You're invited to join us at 10 o'clock or Sunday School at 9.15 this Sunday. So now who do we need to say hello to? We need to say hello to Tony. Hey, Tony. Good to hear from you tonight. And hello to Jan. Hey, Jan. Glad you're with us. And hello to... I'm sorry. You see I the note. You see the note. What? You see yourself. I saw myself going to... Okay. I'm sorry. Um, we need to say hello to Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Glad you're with us tonight. And hello to Charles. Hey, Charles. Notice I'm not saying Thursday anymore. 
Yeah, I said Thursday at the beginning. This oh, Thursday. Oh, okay. Come on, okay. come on, wake up. That was come good. Yeah. That was good. Hello. Hey, Charles. Okay. Hey, Charles, and hey, Betty. Hey, Betty. Um, and hello to Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. We're glad you're with us tonight as well. Is that everybody? That's everybody. All right, listen, and I, I, hope, I hope it was. I hope well, it was. if you know, here's the if thing. If I missed you, please send say, something. send something real fast because we're going to pray, and then uh, Crystal will signal to me and whatever. She'll walk around there and say, "Hey, don't forget to say hey to them." <laughs> so uh, anyway, let's pray tonight that we will be aware. That sometimes the teams change, but the mission always stays the same. It's not always up to us. It's really up to God. And he will choose his missionary or his his speaker. And he will also make the difference in people's hearts, not us. We are to be like Christ, but to trust the Holy Spirit with the outcome. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share in your word tonight. We pray you'd have your way in all things. Be with us and guide us to be obedient, but also, Lord, help us to let the Holy Spirit have room to do His work. We look forward to the opportunities we have to share the gospel, help us to be joyful in our hearts about it, and Lord, also let us not be discouraged when teams change, but let us realize, you know, the, the church and the mission, it's not about us, it's about sharing the gospel with others. Help us to be obedient in doing that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anyone else to say hi to? We want to thank you for watching tonight. We hope you can be with us on Sunday again for Old Fashioned Day. Can't make it. Can't live stream it. Hope to see you at least next Thursday for Carry Hope Ministries. God bless everyone.